Hi, Rebecca here from SimpleSuburbanLiving.us and in this video I'm going to show you how to make homemade beef jerky using ground meat. So I have made it, today I'll be making it with 93% lean beef. I've also made it with ground turkey which was also delicious and turned out really great. So first let me talk about why use ground meat instead of let's say round steak or flank steak or something like that. So there are a couple of reasons. The first one is that it can be relatively inexpensive to make it with ground beef, especially if you manage to get it on sale. Of course that could be true with steak too if you get it on sale. But a bigger reason for me is that the jerky that I make from ground meat is just much easier to eat. I don't know if you've ever bought jerky and you, you know, <laughs> like fighting with it just to take a bite. And it just seems like, like you have to choose between your teeth and eating jerky. With ground beef uh, or jerky made from ground meat, whether that is turkey or uh, hamburger, it's just much softer and much easier to eat and yet it still has that really great flavor. I also find that it's pretty easy to mix it up. So for example, if I am going to make the jerky from steak, I have to cut off, you know, fat, I have to cut it into strips, I have to try to cut out any like gristle or anything like that. With the ground turkey or the ground beef, it's much easier for me to just mix in the uh, spices and things like that. And I do have to roll it out, and that's a little bit of a pain, but it's not too bad. So I also find it easier. So without further ado, let me show you how to make jerky with ground meat. Okay, so I have about a pound of 93% lean ground beef in this bowl. And to the bowl, I'm going to add one-third of a cup of soy sauce. Uh, the original recipe that I found for this called for a half a cup and in my opinion it was a little bit too strong. So just know though that I'm reducing that amount a little bit and so it's up to you as to whether you use a half a cup or a third. And then I have some spices here. Again the original recipe that I came across called for a teaspoon of liquid smoke. I don't have a, uh, any liquid smoke on hand and so instead, I've made it with smoked paprika, which is this red that you see there. That's two tablespoons of that. I also have about an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, a half of a teaspoon of garlic, and, uh, and that's garlic powder, and a half of a teaspoon of onion powder. So I'm gonna just dump it in there. And then all that you need to do is use your hands to mix it up. So it's actually quite easy to do. It's kind of messy. If you want, you might um, want to use like food prep gloves or that type of thing with it to mix it up. But I don't have any, so I just washed my hands real good before starting this video. And I'll obviously wash them really good afterwards. So you just want to mix it until you're sure that it's mixed well. So for right, for example, right now I can see the spices are still not really incorporated very well. This section doesn't seem to have any. So I'm going to mix it a little bit more until I'm sure that the spices are incorporated well into the meat. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to cover this and refrigerate it for a minimum of two hours and um, or you could do it overnight or you could uh, mix this up in the morning before you go to work and when you come home you could uh, put the start the dehydrating then but at least two hours you put it in the refrigerator so I'll be back in two hours to show you what to do next okay so it's been a little bit more than two hours and now it's time for me to roll out the um, the ground beef. Now before I do this let me tell you that there are these they're called jerky guns and I'll see if I can find a link to one and if so I'll put it in the description. I do not have one and the good news is you don't have to have one but if you're going to do this a lot it's probably worth getting one. So um, what I recommend doing there's there's a couple of ways. One you can roll things out thin and 
then just like put little patties very thin like about an eighth of an inch thick patties onto the dehydrator um, and that's what I did last time and it worked well this time I'm going to try something different and it may not work I'm going to press the uh, meat down on the dehydrator uh, trays and I'm going to press it till it's about an eighth of an inch thick okay so I'm going to just try doing it that way and see how it goes so I'm going to do all of that this is a little bit thicker than an eighth of an inch so I'm just going to keep patting it down until it's about the thickness that I want I'm using one of the um, like fruit leather trays for this and uh, so I'm just going to give it a try that way rather than rolling it out and uh, I think that this might be easier so I'll I'm going to pause the camera and then I'll come back when I've got them all ready to go okay so I ended up with three trays and I don't know how well you can see it but there's something different that I'm trying this time and that is that after I formed these little patties I guess you'd call them I decided to try scoring them in the middle with a pizza cutter and my hope is that I'll be able to break them into two if not it's no big deal but I just thought that I would give it a try as a a way to um, potentially be able to break them into smaller pieces alright so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dehydrator lid on and then I am going to, let's see, I've got to get it set on there, right? Okay, then I'm going to switch it to 160 degrees. Over on the side here, you'll see that, ah, where does it say it? Oh, jerky. Over, it's actually over on the left. Jerky meats and fish that you do at 160 degrees. Now, this is one reason I recommend this particular dehydrator. It's a Nesco Professional. Um, I recommend it because you can set it at these different temperatures and generally the cook time is between uh, four and six hours I'm actually going to uh, check it in about three hours and the reason is that I've also learned that to make sure that you kill all the pathogens you do want to put it in the oven at I think it's 275 for um, 10 minutes and last time I did this I had basically it dehydrated all the way and then put it in the oven and it kind of ended up overdone. So this time I'm going to try doing it for a few hours, check it, put it in the oven, and uh, I'll share that whole process with you and the results. And um, anyway, so I'll let you know how long it ends up taking and what the end product looks like. Okay, so the jerky's been in the dehydrator for about four hours now, and it's definitely not done yet. It's a little, well, it's, it's very moist, particularly on one side. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put um, it into the oven for 275 degrees for 10 minutes, and then check it at that point. It does look like the little um, seams that I did with the pizza cutter are going to work and that I'll be able to split them into smaller pieces easily so that's good uh, but I'm going to wait until after they go through the oven because that's part of how I'll test if it's been dried all the way through is I'm going to check to see what it's like in the middle so anyway I will um, put it in the oven for 10 minutes and then I'll determine if I need to dehydrate it some more okay so they've been in the oven for 10 minutes now and um, they look more even in color in person than they do on the camera. Uh, I did cut apart a couple of um, pieces and there's just a little bit of moisture in the middle but you also notice that there's some grease and what I'm going to do is I'm going to blot the grease and I'm going to stick them back in the dehydrator for about a half an hour and I anticipate that they'll be done then. Uh, mainly, The main thing you want to um, check for is you want them to be dry but not hard and brittle so it should be kind of bendable but yet dry so anyway um, when when they come out when I finish them completely I'll let them cool and then I will um, put them in a mason jar to um, just to keep them fresh 
and they should last for a couple of months but I have to tell you they won't last that long around here because we'll eat them they'll be all gone and um, if I was going to keep them longer potentially I would want to put an oxygen absorber or use I have a food saver uh, to seal the jars but since we go through them so fast I'll finish these up in the dehydrator make sure they're all the way dry but not um, hard so they'll still be kind of pliable and uh, then I will let them cool and put them in a quart jar and trust me around here these are probably going to be gone in a week or two so I really don't have to worry too much about them anyway I hope you found this helpful if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and if you like this video I'd appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel Thank you so much and have a great day.